Hello, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, depending on where you are. My name is Luan and welcome to this week's webinar. I hope that it is as useful for you as this sort of information was for me when I was starting out as a teacher. So it's really, really wonderful to see the names and the locations coming in. That's always amazing to see. So just to, to give you a little bit of background information about me, my name is Luan. I'll be presenting to you today. I am from Cape Town, South Africa. So in the meantime, punch in who you are and where you are. It would be wonderful just to see who we've got here today. And please, yes, say hi. So I've been a teacher for over 13 years. And during that time, I've taught students from all over the world. I'm a teacher trainer for the TEFL Academy, an English teacher, and also an examiner. So I'm busy, but never, ever bored, which is a wonderful thing for you, because with your TEFL, you can do so much more than teach. Although teaching takes quite a lot out of you, there's a lot more that you can do. All right, so as the names come in, I'd love to just see who you are and where you're from. Uh, and while we wait for those names uh, to come in, just remember that today there's a very particular topic that we will be discussing. And we'll have a Q&A towards the end of the webinar. And that's when you can ask all those important questions that you've been holding on to or sitting on throughout the webinar. And my advice is to only put the questions in when I open up Q&A. This way, I will definitely spot your question and I'll be able to answer and help you as best I can today. And also remember, that only questions related to today's topic will be answered during this webinar. If, of course, you have any other academic questions that you like to send to us, send them to Tutor Support, open a ticket, send them to Tutor Support, where we will be more than happy to assist you. All right, so yeah, lots and lots of names coming in um, from USA, we've got people from Italy, South Africa, a very cold and wet Brittany, I'm very sorry. <laughs> so welcome, it's wonderful to have you all here today. All right, so I think that by the time you've joined this webinar, you're pretty clued up with as a, you know, what the topic is about. And today's topic, I know that so many of you have tuned in because the assignments, they can be challenging. And as tutors, as markers, we understand that. So we've created these webinars just for you because we feel that they answer so many of the questions that you're sitting on, so many of the questions that you have. And then, of course, as mentioned um, earlier on, later on in the webinar, I will also open up Q&A and I will answer all those important questions because they are important. All right. And also remember, it doesn't matter what your question is. Nine out of 10 times, someone else has the same question. So please don't be shy. When I open up Q&A, ask. All right. So a big welcome to everyone. And let's get started with today's content, right? So in today's webinar, we will be exploring the following. We'll look at assignment A on the level three course. That's assignment A on the level three course. And we're going to be looking at what the assignment assesses what we're trying to gauge, what we're trying to find out, what, what do you know? And that's why this assignment has been created. We're going to look at which documents you're going to be downloading on the assignment instructions page. We're going to be looking at the, the structure, the basic structure of the lesson plans, the form you're meant to base your assignment on, and also the all important teacher language. In other words, how to elicit target language, concept check it, and also check understanding of instructions. Of course, we're not going to go into too much detail um, about teacher language. We've got another webinar for that, but it'll give you an idea of what we're looking for in this particular assignment. And then also we're going to briefly stop at writing a reflection and what it entails because that too, forms part of the assignment. All right, and I still see those names coming in. If you've just joined, big welcome to today's webinar where we are discussing the level three assignment A. Right, so I think a lot of you are wondering, what does the assignment assess? Why, why do the assignment, right? And the assignment assesses your knowledge and your understanding of the course material and the ability to do the following. So 
Can you produce learning aims and, and objectives for a specified lesson type and also class level? Now, when we when we speak of class level, remember this is one of your CEFR levels, um, A1 being elementary, A2 being pre-intermediate, that sort of thing. Can you draw up lesson plans, create objectives and aims for a particular level? Can you produce lesson plans for a specified lesson type, class level? Can you produce resources? Um, so, of course, a lot of the course uh, revolves around this sort of thing and this is of course why we want to test your knowledge and your grasp of the course content up to that point. I think yes I see a comment coming in and you know what I do want to comment on that. Ray has said this is relevant to level five as well absolutely because level five the grammar assignment has got similar structures in place. Um, the lesson plan has got the same structure. There are also teacher language expectations in level five. So you're right on there. And if you're doing the level five course, by no means is this a waste of your time. You will learn so much and you'll know where to start, I think. Right, so also what does the assignment assess? Um, your ability to write personal reflections for learning and teaching using a specific model, to plan a lesson stage in which students are led to analyze the target language um, and to use language that is appropriate for a specified class. So remember, when we speak of target language, it's not that English is not the target language. This is a given in an ESL, English second language or English foreign language. So that's a given. So when we speak of target language, that's the tense you are teaching or the group of words you are teaching or the specific structure you're teaching for that particular day. That's the target language, right? So we also want to see that you're able to really get students to analyze the target language and in doing so, presenting this in a way that is appropriate for that specific class. Right, so the very next thing we're going to be looking at is the documents to download. So on the assignment page, there are a number of documents that you're meant to download and, and work with. So the documents are available on the assignment page, as mentioned earlier. You need to scroll to the bottom to find them. And they are by default in MS Word format. And they must not be altered in any way. If our logo is in one place, leave it there. If our instructions are in a particular place, leave them there. If we're asking you to comment on something, comment on it, don't rewrite it. So the lesson plans are these well, not the lesson plans, the templates for you to work on. We have ver been very, very specific with where you are meant to type and what you are meant to type there. They must not be altered in any, in any way, only typed on. And then, of course, before you upload them, before you send them to us for marking, that's when you convert them to PDF. They've got to be sent to us in PDF format if they are sent to us in MS Word format, we will unfortunately have to ask you to resubmit in the correct format. So the documents we're looking at are as follows. There's the assignment uh, page. Um, and the assignment page is quite clear. And as I mentioned earlier, you need to scroll down. You'll find the face-to-face -face lesson plan. You'll find a template for the online lesson plan. You'll also find a materials file you'll find a personal reflection file, and then you'll find a few PDF files also. But these are model files. So they've been done for you on an entirely different grammar point, but just to show you how we want your templates filled in. So bear in mind, the assignment is meant to be done on a particular target language, but the model files, the model PDF files have been done on an entirely different grammar point, just so that you can see what sort of information we're looking for on your templates. All right, so those are the documents that you're going to have to download and the documents that you're going to have to work on, the documents you're going to have to use for guidance and also the documents that you're going to be using in order to convert them to PDF and send them to us. All right, so the core of the assignment, the absolute hub of this assignment are the lesson plans.
There are two lesson plans that need to be submitted. A face-to-face -face lesson based on a particular form and then an online lesson plan. And this just means a lesson plan created for a face-to-face -face class and a lesson plan created for an online class. But here's the thing. The online lesson plan must mirror the face-to-face -face plan. In other words, it's got to be almost identical. It's just that the online lesson plan has to be tweaked and revised in order to be user-friendly for an online class. So same structure, same context, same teacher language, same everything. The only difference is the online lesson plan has to be created for an online setting. So say, for example, there's a storm. Say, for example, your students can't come to school and you've got to do this lesson online. It's got to be very similar to the face-to-face -face one, just tweaked to be user-friendly in an online lesson. All right. So the next thing to consider is who? Who am I planning this lesson for? A good place to start is the case study, which we have provided on the assignment page. Read it carefully because it gives you the information about your students, their age, the, co the country of origin, the level, and also some important background information too. But I think for me, one of the most important things to, or two of the most important things to consider when planning a lesson is the level of your students and also the age. Because this influences how we present new target language. It influences the words we use when we speak to our students. And it also influences the materials we use. If, for example, we've got a very young class, well, the materials have got to be child-centered. If you've got an adult class, well, then it's a no-brainer that your materials have got to be slightly more grown up, slightly more sophisticated and mature. So do read very carefully the case study because it gives you the background. It helps you visualize the students you are planning this lesson for. Even when I'm preparing uh, lessons for real classrooms, I always ask the school that I'm working at, give me a little bit of background. Tell me about the students. Where are they from? What is the, the average age group? What is the level? Always a good jumping off point when planning lessons. Right. So now let's get back to the all important lesson plans. So on the lesson plan, you are expected to include quite a few details because remember teachers, the lesson plan, we can't see you teaching this lesson. We can't unfortunately walk into your class, sit in a corner and watch you teaching this lesson. So the lesson plans you submit are basically a window into what a classroom with you will look like. It helps us visualize your lesson. It helps us see your stages and your activities. So be as, details, as detailed as you need to be when planning your lesson. So you'll need to fill in the aim of your lesson and you'll need to fill in objectives. So make sure that you understand the differences in these things. How do aims differ to objectives? Study that in the course units because it does very clearly specify. And once you start planning your lesson, and once you see there is a place for all these things, well, then you realize, oh, aims and objectives, very different. I have to know the difference because I need to provide a couple of each. And then also keep your aims, keep your objectives, focused on the target language. Keep them closely related to the target language so that we can visualize exactly where you're going with this lesson. Right. The next thing about the lesson plan is that it's got to be in PPP format. And what does that mean? Well, we've got the warmer and then we've got the three P stages. We've got presentation, we've got practice, and we've got produce. So those are the three P's and they are vital to incorporate. And then also at the end of the lesson plan, you also need a plenary for consolidation. So all in all, your lesson plan has got to have how many? Five stages, the warmer, the three P's and the plenary right at the end, which coincidentally also begins with a P. But don't confuse it because the three P's have got to be there. So that is the, the, the lesson plan and what has to be 
included. And remember that these lesson plans are meant to be designed for a relatively young class at a relatively low level. So I know that you're wanting to add all these sophisticated tools and functions to your lesson, but for kids at the end of the day or for young learners, Yes, of course, we need to engage our young learners, but keep the lesson plan simple so that your marker, when marking the lesson, can really visualize exactly what is going on. It's all about balance. All right, so the next thing to focus on is in the lesson plan, what form am I teaching? And the form for this particular assignment is the past continuous tense for the function of interrupted actions. What does that look like when it goes home? Example, I was playing outside when my mom called me. Was playing is the past continuous. When my mom called me is the past simple interruption. This is the target language you are meant to present in the lesson plan. Research both the form and function of this grammar. It is important that when you submit your assignment that we can see, okay, yes, you can plan a lesson, but do you understand the target language yourself? Have, have you as a teacher, have you done enough research around the target language to teach it effectively? Because we cannot teach something that we don't understand. Don't forget the interruptive clause, for example, when my mom called me, and in the assignment, use only the connector when. Very often we get assignments and people are including the connector while. Avoid that because your learners can only take one structure per lesson. This is whether they are beginner, whether they are advanced, because remember the structures also progress in difficulty. So it's important to present only one. Also, the word while presents a different function. It presents simultaneous actions when we are in fact looking for an interruption. So. To recap, make sure that you research the target language. Example, I was playing when my mom called me. Research the function, research the form. Don't forget the interruptive clause. And in your example sentences, use only the connector when. All right. So some tips for the lesson plans going forward, right? Right. It's important that your lesson plans are clear, that they're well structured, because remember, as mentioned earlier, they're a window into your lesson, they're a window into your classroom, and it helps your marker really visualize what's going on. So for the lesson plans, the online lesson plan is meant to mirror the face-to-face -face plan. It's only just meant to be revised for an online lesson. We have provided models for this. Those PDF models that I spoke of earlier, use them. They're there for you. Of course, though, don't copy the teacher language, for example. Don't copy the context. Make those your own. But use the models as a guide so that you can see exactly what you're meant to do. All right. So the <laughs> as my mom called, I see that when my mom called. We want when in the assignment, not as. But thank you for the suggestion. All right. So the very next thing we're going to be looking at is materials and resources. So your materials and your resources, I'm going to be sticking to, on this one a little bit here because this is very often a cause for resubmit, right? Include all your materials. If you've planned a worksheet for your class, you don't send us only a link to the worksheet. Your marker is not going to click on the link to open the worksheet. So what do you do? You open your worksheet online, you copy and paste the content into your materials file and send us that so that immediately without clicking on web links, without opening little icons, we're able to see your materials the minute we open that materials file. So do not send only links. As mentioned, your marker will not open them. Send the full document copied and pasted into the materials file. Or if you prefer, you can also send a screenshot. If you're using a picture, for example, in the warmer to set a context, Send us the image, not only a link. Copy and paste the full image into your materials file. So 
Just a reminder, the minute we only receive as materials, links or icons, you may be asked to resubmit. Also remember though, that all these lovely resources that you've decided to use in your assignment, they've also got to be referenced in the bibliography section of your assignment. So those are two separate things, your materials, visual representation we need to see, and then all these lovely materials need to be referenced in the bibliography section too. All right, so now we're moving on to teacher language. And the teacher language, again, as I mentioned, we can't be in that classroom with you. We wish we could, but we can't. So we need to hear you. We need to hear what you're saying to your students. We need to be able to visualize and to listen to you. And the only way we can do that is by asking you to include in direct speech um, the teacher language that you will incorporate. Right, so with teacher language, um, we need different examples in the different stages of your lesson. And here we're assessing your ability to elicit an example sentence rather than just give it away. We're looking for evidence that you can elicit the form of that sentence and also concept check the function. We're also looking for evidence that you can effectively check understanding of instructions. So in the warmer of your lesson, remember we spoke about the five stages of your lesson. In the warmer, we need two instruction checking questions. What are these? These are questions that we ask our students after we've given an instruction to a task. We ask them a couple of instruction checking questions to make sure that they know what to do before they start. For example, are you working alone or are you working in pairs? How much time do you have? Are you answering all the questions in the worksheet or only five? Those are instruction checking questions. We also need in the presentation stage, two eliciting questions and two concept checking questions. We've got entire units devoted to eliciting and concept checking. Go over those, watch the webinars on eliciting and concept checking. It is so useful and it'll help you visualize what these techniques look like. And then, in the practice stage, we need two instruction checking questions once again to see that you know how to grade your language and simplify the process. And then in the produce stage, again, two instruction checking questions. And finally, in the plenary, three eliciting or concept checking questions. Go with the instructions um, and it'll just help you consolidate the lesson. Also remember that the teacher language must be in direct speech. It cannot be an explanation of what you will do or what you will say. It's got to be the actual words that you will use to get these ideas across to your students. Now, on our site, we've got loads of helpful videos. There is even a video where we give examples of teacher language. Watch it, it's great, but don't copy paste the teacher language from our video into your assignment. We know our content. So if, if we see that happening, we will unfortunately have to ask you to resubmit because we've got to, uh, we've got to grade the, your ability to come up with your own wording. We've got to grade your work as your own at the end of the day. And if you've used our models or our examples, it's not your own and we're going to ask you to resubmit. And you want to avoid that. It's not a problem having to resubmit, but you certainly don't want to have to resubmit for something like this. So make sure that you use our models and our videos as a guide, but make sure that your wording is exactly your own. All right, I hope that helps. All right, so finally, also, the next thing that we're going to be looking at is the reflective essay. And here, you're going to be taking us through the process from planning to initiation, um, your challenges, what you found enjoyable, what you found difficult. It's a wonderful way for you to reflect. And we've asked you to stick to the Gibbs Reflective Cycle um, as the structure for your reflective account. On the template, you will find headings. Use those headings as a guide write paragraphs. And again, we've given you a model 
So make sure to use the model as a guide, but remember that your wording, your ideas, your experiences have got to be your own. Because again, if it is too similar to our model, we're going to have to ask you to resubmit. And your resubmissions are limited. So you don't want to waste a resubmission on a situation where your work was not your own. So by all means, use them for guidance, but make sure that your wording, your ideas, your experiences are your own. All right, so now I've got quite a few slides coming up where I give you nothing but juicy tips. And I think it's so necessary when embarking on your assignment, right? So when it comes to the assignment, tips are everything. The first thing is use only our templates. So our templates are there for you to use. They're in MS Word format. You're able to add rows. You can type what you need to type. You might have to click on an enable editing button at the top. That's all okay. Type on these templates. Don't remove anything from the templates. Don't change our coloring, our logos. We like our templates, so leave them as they are. Just type in the designated areas left there for you, and you're good to go. And then remember, to convert them to PDF before you upload them, because this is unfortunately another reason we'd have to ask you to resubmit is if you send us those files in MS Word format, you must uh, convert, convert them to PDF before you upload them. Right, then with every assignment, and this one is no different, there is a checklist that you can click on and read before you submit. Please do so, because it also gives you a few tips as to why you could be asked to resubmit. And nobody wants to resubmit. I mean, we've got things to do. We're busy people. So read the checklist, make sure that, print it out for yourself. I like printing stuff and using tangible pieces of paper. So absolutely do that, print it out and tick things off so that you've made sure you've covered everything. And of course, use our naming convention guidelines. We have been very specific about this. We tell you how to save your files, how to name them, how to save them, so that your marker, everything is standardized, and your marker can very clearly see, ah, oh, student A has submitted everything. I can see every file is there. We're good to go. I can open this assignment for grading. If you have not used the naming convention, your tutor will ask you to resubmit. Now, we're not too difficult about this. We won't count the resubmission because we haven't opened your work, but it does waste your time. So make sure you've used the naming convention uh, specified on the assignment page. Students sometimes forget this and they send us files with various names. We only want the file's name the way we've specified and the marker will be able to open the assignment. Um, this is a bit of a rough slide. Some of my wording has been cut off, but this is what the naming convention rules look like on your assignment page. You can see we've specified that firstly, it must be in PDF. We've asked you for your surname, then your first name, then the assignment, then whether it's a submission one or submission two. So every file has got to be um, saved and uploaded like this so that everything is open and standard and your tutor can see that everything's there. All right. And then you'll get feedback. Now, there's something I need to mention about the feedback. Your tutor, if you've been asked to resubmit, your marker will never ask you to resubmit but not give you any feedback. Feedback and very detailed feedback sometimes. So to view assignment feedback, remember that this is in the course material and in our frequently asked questions section on how to find the feedback. You simply go to your home page, you click on the icon at the right hand corner, um, select grades. This is a long process, but if you've got it on your computer, you'll be able to find it, no problem. Uh, you click on your course, you scroll down past your test results, and boom, your assignment feedback is at the bottom of the page. So if you've forgotten how to do this, just go into our FAQs or into our course material content, you'll find it. If you really can't find it, send us a ticket and we'll just send you the little procedure on how to find your feedback. But please remember, your marker will always send feedback. We will never ask you to resubmit and not tell you why. 
Not only will we tell you why, but we'll tell you what's gone wrong, how to fix it, and we'll even give you a few examples to get you on your way. So that is when you've been asked, for example, to resubmit. All right. And if, as I mentioned earlier, there is something you really can't figure out or you just need a bit of hand holding, contact us at Tutor Support. We love holding hands. We love giving extra information. We like to clarify things. It's why we wake up in the mornings and we're right there to help you with all your questions. Remember that the course, the assignments, all these have been created for people who have not taught before. So we understand you've got questions and those are OK. As specified in our terms, though, remember that we cannot preview any of your assignment work before you submit. We will not be able to preview files or concept questions that you've decided to write or materials that you want to include because of our limited submission um, process. So you get three attempts in total, one an initial submission and two resubmission attempts. And remember, it's okay to have to resubmit because it doesn't mean you failed. It means that just something needs to be fixed or something needs to be tweaked, something needs to be revised. It's absolutely okay to have to resubmit. I did my TEFL, I cannot tell you how many years ago, and I had to resubmit assignments. It didn't feel great at the time, but when I saw everyone else had to resubmit too, it felt less bad and it was okay. So it's one of those things where our assignments have to meet a certain standard. You're a new teacher. These concepts are new to you. You may just have forgotten something or misunderstood one of the instructions and we're there to help. Your marker will let you know why and tell you how to improve it. So it's very rare very very rare that people fail our course so please ask questions we're here to help you all right so we have come to the end of my presenting to you but i know you've got questions because i am going to be opening up q and a very very soon and that's when i want you to type your questions if you have typed your questions before I might have missed them because remember people are commenting as we go along. So if you typed a question earlier and you need me to answer it, please just copy and paste it, send it again because I will be opening Q&A up in a couple of seconds where I will answer all those important questions. And I know you've got questions. You're doing an assignment. Of course you have questions. All right, so Q&A is hereby open. And I am ready for all those important questions. All right. I will see if I can if I can access any of the questions that came through a little bit earlier. I cannot promise anything because, as mentioned, now is the time to type your questions into um, the Q and A section. All right. So I've got a question that's just come in. All right, give me one second. All right, could you please provide a few examples of teacher language questions in the produce stage and the plenary? Right, so for the produce stage, you also need to include instruction checking questions. So that is after you've given the instruction to your students, you know, what they have to do, before you set them free and allow them to do the activity, Nikki, you've got to check that they've understood what to do. So say, for example, you've put them in pairs and they've got to role play, um, two characters, um, you've given them maybe five minutes to do this role play, and they've got to include the target language. So those are the instructions, right? But now instruction checking questions would be, are you working alone? Are you working in pairs? How much time do you have? Who are, what is the activity? Um, is it a role play? What are your roles? Um, what will you do when you're finished? So those are instruction checking questions that we could ask at the beginning of the, pr the produce um, activity. And then in the plenary, um, it's the eliciting questions or concept checking questions just to consolidate learning, to consolidate whether they've understood the, con the, the target language. For example, um, the past continuous. Is the action happening right now? Is it happening in the past? 
is the action finished? Does the second action happen? Is the second action a long or a short action? Um, can you give me the form of the past continuous? Uh, how many clauses are there? So it's just a matter of checking that they've understood the form and the function of the target language. So I really hope that that has helped, Nikki. All right. So I see a few more questions have come in. I'm going to display them on the board or on the screen. Um, but I hope that's helped because I know that a few more of you have got asked us. All right. All right, so let's see. Um, <laughs> uh, Stephen, you know what? Just for my own ego, I'm going to put this up. How did you get to, to be so good at teaching us all of this? You'll get there too. Lots and lots of practice on students, and then you get really, really good at training teachers too. But thank you very much. Our tutors, we enjoy the webinars, so we're really passionate about what we present to you. And I think that's probably what you're feeling and what you're seeing on the screen here today. But thank you. All right, so Valentina has got a question. And Valentina, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, you are contacting us from the beautiful Italy. Um, sorry, I want to know the order of the three pages. Um, all right, so I think you're asking about the PPP structure, right? Okay, so remember you've got your warmer right at the start. Warmer should be about five minutes. Then you've got your presentation stage right? Then you've got your practice stage, then you have your produce stage, and then you have your plenary. So Valentina, re-watch this webinar when it becomes available in a few days, and I've actually got a slide up where I take you through the various stages. And if you forget, please just ask us on tutor support and we'll send you lots and lots of information. But those are the PPP stages. All right. And then Elena has sent us a question. In the teacher language of the presentation stage, for example, it is required to make two eliciting questions and two concept questions. Can I include more than two eliciting questions? Of course you can. It's absolutely fine. I'm, I love using eliciting questions in my class. I always find that they're so useful for my students and I also end up including a little bit more. So you can absolutely include a couple more eliciting or a couple more concept questions for us to grade. That's perfectly all right, Elena. All right. Let's see, Anna has sent us a question when I prepare my own sentences with some ex some samples for practicing past continuous. Will print screen copied for material sheet will be enough? Anna, I'm sorry, I don't understand the question. Maybe you can just rephrase that for us because I'd love to answer that question and help you. All right, John, when you are writing up the different parts of your assignment, such as the warmer or your lesson plan, right, John, the warmer, do you need to write out a full dialogue for every part where you might be explaining part of the topic? No, you do not. So the warmer, for example, we just ask you in the lesson plan to explain the context, how you'll engage your students, what you'll say to them with a couple of examples of instruction checking questions. But no, absolutely not a full dialogue for every single stage, right? So we have specified throughout the, the um, lesson plan um, part what we need and what sort of teacher language we need. That's the only dialogue bits that we need in the level three assignment A. All right, but no, not a full dialogue for everything. All right, I'm going through the questions. Okay, so here's a lovely one because context is everything. Thank you, Vera. Um, could you please give us some examples for appropriate context topics for 10 to 12 year olds? I would like to include a song, for example. So when it comes to a context, I think it's got to be something that your young class can relate to because 
if they can relate to the context, it'll give them a guideline on when, how, and why they'll be using the target language, right? So I find that talking about the weekend really just loosens up um, all those ideas in the warmer, lowers effective filters, sees what they already know. You know, um, kids are also very dramatic. So the weekend when the storm happened or, you know, when when some baddie stole someone's purse or someone's um, picnic <laughs> at the park. So I would say keep your context really relatable for the group. Um, you know, I'm a little tentative when it comes to murder mysteries because we would absolutely use this target language. I was sitting in the library when I heard a noise, um, but I would maybe, you know, ease this up for kids. You know, the, the board game Cluedo, quite interesting. Um, you know, you could project a picture of a nice big chocolate on the screen and say, right, that was mine and it's gone. Where were you? when my chocolate disappeared and then get their ideas. So it immediately engages your students. Um, I would say things like the weekend, the past holidays, last week at the park, teacher's chocolate went missing, relatable topics, relatable context that your learners can really, really respond to with their own ideas and their personal experiences. And then they're able to better visualize when to use the target language later in the lesson. All right, I hope that helps. I'm really sorry if I am. I'm scrolling through. I'm, I might be missing a couple of questions. But remember, if I do miss a couple of questions, please send them to Tutor Support and we'll absolutely try to help you. Um, right, so we've also got a few questions around pictures and materials. So let's answer this one. Elena, if I use many pictures, more than 10 from the same source, should I reference every single picture in my bibliography? Um, right, so if it's from exactly the same source, we do require a link to the picture. Um, but if it's from, you know, a site where you can find sort of bulk pictures in one location on the internet, okay, then you could maybe send us just one reference. But if the picture, each picture has got its own location, for example, on a website, then yes, we're going to need a hyperlink to all the pictures that you use. It's quite important to reference absolutely everything that you use in the assignments. All right, I've also got a few questions around word counts. The word counts are specified at whenever we ask you for an essay or a reflective account or any kind of text-based task, we do specify the word count on that document. We will never ever just ask you to write an assignment um, or to write an essay or to write a reflective account without giving you a word count. So Nikki, just check on the template it should be there and also use the model as a guide. Those models are there for you. So even if the model's word count differs a little bit from the word count specified on the template, as long as you've kind of stuck to one or the other, you'll be fine. All right. So Vera has asked, could you please tell us where to find an open source that explains the past continuous for interruptions in detail? Oh, Vera, there are so many online. But do this, send us a ticket on Tutor Support, and we'll send you a few free to use resources just to help you understand the form and the function of the past continuous, particularly of interrupted actions. We've also got um, a more a uh, logical guideline to the assignment, I want to say, just to help you step by step. And there are also some useful resources in there to help you understand the target language. But yes, there are so many online. But I will say, Vera, as long as you keep the target language in focus, and that is the past continuous plus when plus the past simple, you'll be okay. But send us a ticket and we'll send you some of those useful resources because they're great. They're really user friendly and they explain everything in so much detail. All right, I see a couple of questions coming through about the other assignments. Um, 
I unfortunately will not be answering those today. I'd like to keep our focus on the assignment of the webinar, which is the level three assignment A. If, however, you have any questions about the other assignments, please send us a ticket and we'll be more than happy to help you. All right. Yeah, I see more coming in about level five assignment A. Sorry, guys, this webinar is specifically for assignment uh, for on the level three course assignment A. This is not the level five assignment. It is useful for one of the level five assignments because one of the level of five assignments is also a grammar assignment. But level 5A, there's a webinar for that. There's also lots of help on our course. You can also send tickets, and that's where we can help you with your with the level 5 assignment questions. All right, so nice question. I noticed that the aim and two objectives already uh, put onto the online template. May I, you can leave them there and you can just add a couple more if you want. I always say just leave whatever's on the template right there. Don't remove it. Leave it there and then add yours, Elena, um, just below those that are on the template and you'll be fine. More than fine. You're certainly not going to get penalized for just adding a couple of your own ideas in that section. All right. Oh, love this question. Thank you, Ivy, for asking. Once you are asked to resubmit the assignment and you're given feedback, does that mean you redo all of the assignment? Um, Ivy, I'm just kind of editing a little bit as I go along um, or work on what the marker has highlighted. Right, so if, for example, there are sections of your assignment that need work before we can pass your assignment, it will be specifically um, highlighted with N for no. And then next to that, you'll receive very detailed information as to why that particular section has not passed, right? So what you need to do, Ivy, is only work on that. Of course, if the change you make in that particular section affects something in the assignment too, then yes, you can absolutely make the related change. For example, if I have told you to um, not use a particular picture, to remove it, or not to use a video or a song because it reveals the target language, then of course you might have to remove it from your materials file, or you might have to change your teacher language if you have used this video as a foundation, for example. So then yes, you would make maybe a couple of extra changes, but moral of the story is to work on only what your marker has asked you to work on. However, even though you will only have particular sections to revise, you are meant to resubmit your full assignment. So even if Ivy, even if you only had to work on um, the lesson plan, but everything else was okay, you will work on the lesson plan, but resubmit everything again as a whole. We can only ever accept full assignments. We cannot accept their um, specific or um, independent files, if that makes sense. All right. Very good question because it always comes up. Okay. All right, so I see a question coming in for assignment C on the level five. I will not be answering that today, unfortunately. You can send those questions to tutor support and we will very happily answer it. The questions I am addressing today are only related to the level three assignment A. Okay, so we've also got a question. I think it's related to referencing. Right. So when we reference, we our, our referencing file, we use the Harvard system and we also give you very specific examples. So look on the assignment page with all the documents that you're meant to download. There should be a referencing file 
for you to see the style of referencing that we're looking for. If you can't find this document, send us a ticket and we will send the document to you and give you a few extra pointers on how to reference all those resources that you're wanting to use. So please, please, please find the referencing file or send us a message and we will put you on the right path. All right. So we have a question. I honestly found <laughs> that I have no clue what the kids are into today. Oh, join the club. I have a 15 year old and I don't think I know exactly what the kids are into today because what they're into today changes tomorrow. I might have to install TikTok, <laughs> but you are right. I will keep it simple for the assignment. Thank you. Absolutely. And I think this was in relation to the question about context. Keep it really, really relatable for them because remember, you're teaching them a particular target language and you want them to produce this later on. So if they understand what sort of context they're meant to use it in, it does half of the work for you. Also, a strong context set in the warmer makes the eliciting of the target language so much easier in the presentation stage. All right, so Noah, Noah's asked us, how do you give a proper PPP lesson? So Noah, we've got a nice, lovely video for you. In the unit, sorry, in the level three course, there's a section, um, how to, how to plan a PPP lesson with instructions and video. Please, Noah, do yourself a favor and go over that content because it just mirrors what's happening here today. While I'm answering individual questions, that particular bit of course content really takes you from start to finish of how to plan a PPP lesson. And you cannot do the assignment without it. So please have a look in the course. Um, it should be there. I watched it just the other day. It tells you exactly what to do. And you know what? I know that the structure seems a bit rigid. However, as new teachers, we need that structure. We can dress up the lesson with materials and lovely contexts and fun activities. But if your structure is there, you feel secure as a teacher and your learners know what's coming. They know what to expect. And then as you get a little bit more confident, of course, you can tweak and change things as you go along. But the PPP structure really helped me in my early teaching days and I still use it today. All right, so I think this is in connection with the um, webinar today. I just got enrolled. Welcome and congratulations. How often do we get live lessons? Well, these um, particular webinars, they run on a weekly basis. Every single Saturday, we've got a one hour webinar and it's always based on one particular topic. Today's is on the level three assignment A, but next week is something entirely different. Also, you can re-watch these as many times as you need to um, because on our YouTube channel, if you can't find that, send us a ticket and we'll send you the link. And then you can watch them all at your own pace. But um, Malesedi, we also have lots of videos, lots of interactive activities on the course, and you're able to watch and re-watch these at your leisure as many times as you need to. And then if anything is unclear, ask us and we'll help you. All right, so um, Tony has asked, do the markers check for all errors before requesting resubmission or one at a time? So Tony, we try as far as we can to check everything. We don't want to check one thing, ask you to resubmit because of this, and then in the next marking tell you, oh, something else is wrong too. This would not be fair to you. However, sometimes an assignment needs scaffolding. So say, for example, you need to do something or add something, then we can only give you feedback once you've added that. And then maybe the next time you'd have to resubmit, that would be the only time. Other than that, Tony, generally, we have a look um, at the assignment as a whole, and we try to point out as many of the errors as we can first time so that you don't have to resubmit. We don't want you to resubmit. We want you to pass first time, but if you do resubmit, we try to get it all out of the way after that very first attempt. 
Oh, thank you, Roberto. That is a really nice comment. Thank you so much. Um, let's see. So Noah has asked, can I use as many PDF formats as I want? So um, the templates, Noah, are there on the assignment page. And the templates are in MS Word. And those are the ones you must type on. And those are the ones you must put your work on. And those are the ones that you must convert to PDF before you send them to us. So we're very specific about what we want you to submit. It's very, very clear. And I want you to ask questions if it's not. We really, really want to hold your hand during this assignment. So if you're doing the assignment and you find, oh, there are templates in MS Word, there are templates in uh, PDF, I don't quite know what to submit, ask us. But the MS Word templates are the ones that you're meant to submit to us. If you want to submit something extra, like a material file with some extra pictures, that's fine. But the core templates are there for you to work on and send to us. All right. I am sorry, I'm not going to be answering any of the level five um, questions. I am only ask, answering questions for the level three assignment A. Noah. Yes. <laughs> yes, we are absolutely uh, putting together a webinar for assignment B level three. So absolutely watch out for that one. It will be shown. You will be guided on that assignment too. And please remember, Noah, just as I've mentioned before, you can absolutely rewatch this, this one as many, many times as you need to. I'm like this. I always end up missing things or not writing things down properly, and I need to rewatch stuff pause it, start it again. So you have the luxury to do that. And yes, assignment B is coming. All right. I am going to be scrolling through. Ah, okay. Ivy's asked a question about the yes and the no, right? So on the feedback sheet, when we send you your feedback, on the assignment, we have a column that says meets um, course requirements or meets assignment requirements, and it's either a yes or a no. The yes indicates that that section is fine and there's no need for you to work on that section. The no indicates that that section needs a bit of work and then you should really find some extra feedback on the side of that to tell you why. So that's why you'll see the yes and the no. If your tutor has just put no, with no explanation as to why, please send us a ticket. It might have just been wiped out when the feedback sheet got uploaded. It might have been forgotten, human error. So please do let us know if you've just received a no, but no explanation, and we will ask your tutor to clarify. Remember, we are that middleman. We'll be able to contact your tutor and ask them just to clarify the feedback for you, just in case you've received a no and you don't know why. All right. All right. So this is a difficult one to answer, Emily. I'm sorry, because how many pages is the assignment? We've got different documents that you've got to fill in. Some people tend to write a little bit more. Some people tend to write a little bit less. But the files that I told you about earlier, those are the files that you'll be working with. They start as one or two pages, but of course they expand as you type in them and they might be a little bit more. Sometimes we get submissions of about 16 pages. Sometimes we get submissions of 20 odd pages. Sometimes we get submissions of nine, 10 pages. Those are a little bit suspicious because I'm thinking, mm, I hope you put in enough information. So yeah, it's okay to find that balance. And Emily, don't stress about it because if you've included too little information, we'll ask you to clarify. If you've included too much, we'll comment on that too. All right, let's see. On level three, assignment A, great start to the question. That's the webinar we're working with today. We have to use templates from the given examples or the core is completely our own. Our templates, they must be used. The models are there to guide you. The template is there for you to use and type on. And then, of course, um, your context is your own. The target, the, the, the model sentence you elicit is your own. Your teacher language is your own. But the templates have got to be used as they come. 
All right. So I am sorry, but it seems that we've come to the end of our webinar. And um, I'm really sorry if I couldn't get to all your questions. They are good questions. I'm sure I've missed a couple. But yes, we only have an hour. But as mentioned, if you do have questions um, that a little bit outside of today's webinar or you've just remembered something a little bit later on that you want to ask about, as mentioned earlier, you can send a ticket to Tutor Support where we will, of course, answer all your questions. All right. So I really, really am so happy you joined today. And I'm getting lots of thanks coming in. You're so welcome. It's why we do these things, just to make the assignments a little bit easier for you. Um, some people are saying you're making difficult things sound easy, but you know what? They get easier as you go along. They get more achievable. They get easier. And we're here to help you just bridge that little gap. So absolutely welcome. Join the webinar, same time, same place next week. I am going to be putting the um, uh, the survey link on the screen, but I'm also sending it to you in the chat. It should be arriving in the chat in a couple of seconds. And again, thank you very much for joining. For those of you who are enjoying the Easter weekend, have fun. Those of you who do not, just enjoy the weekend. All right. Thanks again and see you next time.